I've been listening to a shit ton of fucking new music lately, and right now, I gotta talk about it. The first album I wanna opine over is Stay Golden by Maryland Pop Punkers, Combat. This is a cute, thoughtful, well-written batch of emo-tinged pop-punk songs with a lot of meat on the bone here. If you like pop punk with a through line, then this is the thing for you. Although not as narratively cohesive as an early cursive record, Stay Golden manages to hit all the marks it sets out to hit. There's a great flow to the track list, but I don't think that it needed to be 41 minutes to get the entire message across. I think that you could have cut one song from each side of the disc and got the same message to the listener. I hear their influences show up front and center right on their sleeve. And that's not a bad thing, it doesn't detract or degrade in any single way. But it's clear that this band really likes Pup, Mom Jeans, Tiger's Jaw, and maybe a little modern baseball. In my books, that's not a bad thing. I love those bands. The two eight-minute songs are the magic ingredients that turn this from a regular old emo-tinged pop-punk album to a full-blown concept record. This will be added to the rotation. I quite enjoyed it. 81 out of 100. Next up, San Diego's own CU Space Cowboy hit us with their third full-length record, Coup de Gras. Or as Finn Balor pronounces it, Coupe de Grace. CU Space Cowboy are a throwback to when Screamo and Hardcore did a fusion dance on MySpace in the 2000s to create post-hardcore. There is a visceral pain that permeates through this entire track list, which makes for a very cathartic listen. Front woman Connie Scarbosa's tortured howls make me feel a certain kind of energetic empathy that makes me want to simultaneously headbang and give out a bunch of hugs. There are melodic moments, piano parts, and other such elements that soften it up around its corners. Coup de Gras is an onslaught of vulnerable rage, and it's meticulously pulled off by top-class performers in the subgenre. 86 out of 100. Yeah, it's something, it's something. Moving on. Sacramento Punkers Destroy Boys are back with their fourth studio album out on Hopeless Records called Funeral Soundtrack No. 4. The album opens with a song called Bad Guy, which is a million times better than the Ronnie Radke song released recently with the same name. The band are adding a bit more of a dark post-punk kind of energy on this one, and they're pulling it off with soaring colors. The dark vibes being played with don't detract from the catchy earworms and danceable moments though. Front person Alexia Roditis is sounding pissed and purposeful with a vocal range that goes from harmonic melodies to vicious roars. Musically, we're taken through a few different alleyways too. We go through some pretty rocky, palm muty, punk rock back roads, and then we take a sharp left on 90s post grunge alternative avenue. Then we travel under post punk bridge and through Riot Girl Tunnel. There's a subtle, almost Spanish mariachi quality in the chord progressions and grooves that run through the DNA of this record that I find very interesting. Hopeless Records should be thrilled to have a band this versatile and talented on their roster. Feminist anthem You Hear Yes featuring Mannequin Cookie and Scowl goes insanely hard. I feel that every aspect of this album comes from a raw and authentic place and it's articulated masterfully and originally. I walked away from this project knowing exactly who Destroy Boys are and what they stand for. This record has something to tell you and you'll sit the f*** down and listen. Something this outspoken and unapologetic is a rare pull. 87 out of 100. Okay, a speed run before the final boss. Kaunashi hit us with an EP called Second Chance at Forever. What the f**k happened to Kaunashi? Why do they suck now? This is the biggest disappointment of the year. Huge bummer, 33 out of 100. Uranium Club, Infants Under the Ball. It's a strange but enjoyable record, 76 out of 100. Scud hit us with two demos this year, Demo and Demo 2. They are the band to look out for, 79 out of 100. Earlier this year, Bring Me the Horizon hit us with this record called Next Gen. It's better than Falling in Reverse, but not by much. I have no idea why this record is being so highly rated by everybody. I see it as a 22 out of 100. Okay, now it's time to pull out the big guns. It's final boss activity time. And the final boss of this video is Big Special. This English duo dropped their debut album, Post Industrial Hometown Blues, and oh my god, I wasn't ready. Post punk has been a mixed bag for me this year, but this is a case where the artist transcends the subgenre. This album is a haunting, poetic bone song. This English duo create wildly imaginative songs without coming across like a bunch of artsy know-it-alls. <coughs> Idols. This shit is rugged, greasy, 
and not afraid to show us the ugly side. In fact, it's there just to show us the ugly side. I see a ton of street smarts and introspection here too. Big Special unapologetically leaves all of its blood in the ring. This feels like a soundtrack to a futuristic cyberpunk dystopian film set on the streets of a corrupt and decaying London city. Post-industrial hometown blues is full of beautifully rich sonic textures that are so expertly and delicately applied that it makes my head spin. There's a dramatic tension that followed me throughout the runtime, and it all satisfyingly paid off at the end with the euphoric, climactic, and triumphant song entitled Dig. I'm calling it right now. There will not be a better album this year. 99 out of 100, a genuine masterpiece. Thanks for watching. Until my next upload, watch another upload. Okay, see ya.